I love Christmas season. It's so special. It reminds us of families and times of getting together. If you notice the little Charlie Brown clip in that intro, I mean, that says it all about Christmas, doesn't it? He's got the Christmas story engaged there. He's with his friends and his family, good old little Charlie. He's trying to figure out what's going on with all the commercialism and Christmas, if you remember the story. It's tough, and he's all confused, and he gets that little bitty tree that you see up there on the monitor, and, and, and Snoopy's out decorating his, his own little doghouse, and it's so beautiful, but not little Charlie Brown. He's this, and he gets so frustrated, and he's asked Linus in that, well, in the scene before there about what's the meaning of Christmas. And once you know the scripture that we're going to be focusing on today, Linus quotes on TV, starting in 1965, Luke 2, the story of Jesus being born. That's the true meaning of Christmas, Linus tells Charlie Brown. And then they go back, and they decide, we love our old Charlie Brown, and they get together, and they look at the little tree, and that's where we're going to go to the next slide here, and we're going to say, you know, they put together that little tree, and they just gave it a little bit of love, just like Christ gives us. And then, wouldn't you know, they close by celebrating Charlie Brown, and by singing Hark the Arrow Angels Sing, which is our hymn for this morning that we get to focus on. So all we got to do is just play the reel for Charlie Brown, and we're good. It's, I love families and this time, the season, the decorations, the lights, the candy, the presents, families getting together. I remember a story. I grew up in Dallas, and all our families get, have a big Christmases, and we went from Dallas to my mom and dad down to Houston, and we get ready for Christmas, and when you know, they forgot all our toys, all our presents. And so my family, my cousins, my aunts and my uncles, without us knowing about it, they gave presents to my parents to give to us that Christmas, which was kind of a double bonus for us because we went back to Dallas, and then we had a great Christmas again. So, but Christmases aren't always like that, are they, for everybody? Mm -mm, I'm here in the front row. Uh, I don't remember one Christmas that I actually spent with my dad growing up. The man that took us down to Houston was my stepdad, and I was blessed to be in his family, and they loved us and my brother. But, you know, my father, after they, my mom and dad got divorced, went overseas for 10 years. I didn't really see him growing up. We got to know each other later in life. When after I was a teenager and in college, we fished, hunted, he loved the ocean, so we spent a lot of time on the water. But I never saw him growing up. I was talking to a friend earlier this week, and he was telling me, Christmases are brutal. This is a brutal time of the year. Families that are broken, going through divorce or separation, this is hard. People that have lost a parent, a loved one this season, that's tough. And so the good news is we have Christ, and we get to celebrate him. We have a wonderful hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, that we're going to visit about this morning. And you see the picture of the angel here and how beautiful that is. And it's a celebration of new life brought to us and the joy that we can have in this life that supersedes all the surface level circumstances. And the peace that we get from him. And in fact, that's going to be our theme this morning. True love and deep peace only comes through Christ our King. And that's why the angels sing. So I want to say good morning. Thank you for letting me be here this morning. Thank you to Marty, Pastor Marty Baker, our, our wonderful senior pastor, giving me the opportunity to visit with you this morning. He did a tremendous interview. Uh, Welcome, an introduction of our carol series last week. Same author that wrote his, his hymn, wrote this one. And I was excited for that. So if you saw his talk last week and you came back saying, I want to see more about hymns, sorry you got stuck with me. And we'll try to make it through together. Um, he should be back next week. And I believe that he's doing uh, What Child Is This? So it's a wonderful hymn. And I want to say thanks to him and thanks to you for letting me be part of the staff here. I want to say thanks to the tech team and our worship team. They do such a great job in getting everything put together. 
our facilities guys and our maintenance team. It takes a lot to make Sunday morning happen, so thank you for them. And if it's okay with you, we'd just like to start off with the prayer this morning, and then we'll get right into our sermon. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for giving us this day and this time together. Pray that this time that we spend will be to your glory and it will be an encouragement to us as we learn how to trust you for the deep joy and the peace that we enjoy through a relationship with Christ our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's get right to the hymn and see what we're going to be singing about and talking about this morning. We have the first two lines up here. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Those are the first two lines of the hymn. They're beautiful. Most of this, this is a beautiful hymn, by the way. It's, it it kind of comes in couplets, two lines together. And this first one presents the whole thing that we're singing about. The newborn king. Glory to him. It's a song of praise and worship. And then it's answered by these two lines. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinner reconciled. That's the highlight of the hymn. Why are the angels singing? Why are they announcing it? Because it's all about God and sinners being reconciled through Christ. He did that for us. And that's why we have the true joy and the deep peace through Christ only. That's why the angels sing. So this morning, we're going to try to talk about two things. What did the angels actually announce to the shepherds? What are they talking about with Christ and what is he going to do? And then, so what? Why do we care? What does it matter to us? How should it impact our lives? We're going to start by talking about the hymn, and then we're going to talk about the scripture reference where we really believe that Charles Wesley was studying when he wrote this hymn. So let's start a little bit with the history because it's relevant to what we're going to be talking about as far as the message. So Charles Wesley in 19, or 1739, he wrote the original lyrics, and... You remember from what Marty shared last week, he was probably the greatest composer of hymns that we know. Even some, as many as 8,900 hymns he wrote. I think Marty quoted 6,500 last week. And so there's different references for that guy. I guess I can't keep up with them all. He wrote this, Hark, how all the welkin ring. Glory to the King of Kings. Oh, my goodness. That's not exactly what we sing every day. What is a welkin? What does that mean? And what is it, why does it ring? Well, welkin is an old English term for hymn or firmament of the heavens, the vault of the heavens. We're ringing. The heavens are ringing, all of heaven, all of creation, because of Christ, because of the King of kings. And Charles was a studied man. And so he liked those lyrics, but his brother John, he wasn't so sure. Sometimes he used to review the hymn and make changes and cut his 20 stanzas down to six or cut them into different songs. And so he was thinking, I'm not so sure about welcome. It's kind of already an old term. So along comes about 10 years later, 12 years later, the person named George Whitfield, a contemporary of theirs, a friend of theirs, but he was a little bit more charismatic. Maybe not so literal in the scriptures, exactly. And so he decided, you know, I agree with John. I think the lyrics sound better. I think the angels were singing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. And he made those changes. When Charles Wesley found out about it, rumor is he never listened to that hymn again. <laughs> so he, like, no, they didn't sing. And, but over the next hundred years, People were singing George Whitfield's version to different kind of hymns. And now you're probably saying, oh, great. Are you trying to ruin my Christmas here? You telling me the angels didn't sing about Jesus? Well, I'm just going to have to wait to find out what I think about that. So come along up almost 100 years later, a guy named Felix Mendelssohn. You might know him, a famous composer in a romantic area, era, charismatic music. He pins on the 400th anniversary of the printing press a musical piece to celebrate the printing press, which was, by the way, the first time the Bible was printed. Printed words 
of Jesus were the first thing that came out of the Gutenberg Press. And then a few years after that, William Cummings in 1855 merged the words and the hymn and the, and the music together and published it in all things of the Methodist hymnal. To, I'm sure Charles would disappoint. And that's what we're seeing today. So the summary of the hymn and the history of it is fascinating because the words celebrate the birth of Christ. But the music celebrates the birth of the printing press that brought the words of Christ to the world. Isn't that cool? I think it's fascinating. So let's, we still didn't answer your questions about the angels. And the reason, you know, what's important is what did the angels say? What message did they bring to us? What did they announce? And that's what we want to talk about. So we're going to look at Luke and see what did they say, actually. And if you have your Bibles and your phones, I just invite you to turn with me if you like. We're going to spend a moment going through the scripture here. From Luke 2, starting in verse 8. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel. Okay, well, what's an angel? Is An angel is a messenger. They execute the purpose of the one who sent them. They bring God's love and plan to us. They're an intermediary from God to us to bring us information. So an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, unexpected to them. They weren't anticipating this. They're just tending for their sheep. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. Think about the Shekinah glory of the Lord. Think about what Moses saw, the burning bush or the fire at night or the clouds in the day that guided them. The glory of the Lord shone on the on the shepherds, so they're naturally afraid. That's a natural response to the supernatural presence. So the angel said to them, which is a pattern that they did, they always said, don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, great, remarkable, out of the ordinary, abundant joy, which will be for all the people. So the angels are are celebrating the good news of Christ being born. As we see in the next verse, for today in the city of David, there's been born for you a Savior, Christ the Lord. And then the angels go and tell them, this is going to be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. And then suddenly, again, with the suddenly, the angels have some urgency here. There appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, probably way more than what we saw in that painting when we put it up, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. This is the highlight of the scripture. Glory to God because there's peace on those whom he is pleased. Who is he pleased with? Those who know him and have a relationship with him. Those whom he saved and called to himself. And when the angels had gone away from them to heaven, notice what the shepherds did. When they saw and had an experience with the Lord, they began saying to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem. We're not messing around. We're going to go straight down there. We're going to act on what the Lord showed us. Let's see the thing that's happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They acknowledged that God is the one that gave them the message. So they went in a hurry, and they found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby, and he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about Christ. So they had information from the Lord, and then they shared it. They shared it with others. That's a good example for us to follow, isn't it? When we have information that's helpful or encouraging to others, to be able to share it with them. So when they had seen this, they made known the statement which they had been told to them, and all who heard it wondered. They were astonished. They were amazed. They're thinking, what is all this about the baby? At the things that w- which were told them by the shepherds. Then Mary treasured them in all these things, pondering them in her heart. And then the shepherds went back, and they showed another proper response to when the Lord is working in our lives and revealing his truth to us, whether we're studying scripture or praying or interacting with other Christians. They glorified and praised him for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as they had told them. So this is an exciting, an exciting experience for the shepherds, for the people that are touched by 
the shepherds who they saw and that were exposed to the truth about Christ. And so if you think about from the angel's perspective, I mean, how could they not sing? You might think. They'd known that Gabriel had already, probably, they knew Gabriel had already revealed about Christ to Mary. He'd already told Zacharias about John, who was the precursor to Christ. Angel had already come to Joseph in a dream. And all those prophecies Marty talked about last week, 333 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, the angels are coming to tell the shepherds, all of this is happening right before your eyes. How could they not be excited? The truth is, what Luke recorded talks about them speaking and proclaiming the truth about who Christ was. If the angels actually sang, he didn't record that exactly. But maybe he decided that wasn't important enough to record. Maybe what he thought was important was the message. So I can leave it to you to decide how you'd like to remember this hymn. True joy and deep peace, which is the important message that the angels gave us, come only through Christ the King. And that's why the angels sing. But now if you're all disappointed, you can say that's why the heavens ring. Because the heavens are ringing about Christ. So why do we care about this? Why do we care about this message and what the angels are singing? There's two things I want to point out. And that is because Christ is the source of our salvation, which is the source of our joy and security in life. We look at the, we think about the first four hymns of the stanza. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. That's what they're singing about in the hymn. Christ. You know, there's six references to salvation in the first three stanzas of this hymn. Light and life he brings, risen with healing in his wings, born that we may no, no more may die. He's born to give us second birth. They use ten name, he uses ten names of Christ 15 times in the, in the first three stanzas. He refers to him as king, prince, and lord. He talks about the virgin birth, the incarnate deity of Christ, how Christ sets aside his own glory, the kenosis process of and that's a big mystery to us. It's hard to understand. How does God set aside his glory or, or, or submit some of his attributes to take the form of a man? But the hymn addresses that and celebrates Christ and that he gives a second birth. And look at Luke, where that came from. Verses 10 and 11 in Luke 2. For the angel told him, don't be afraid. Remember what he said, the first angel? For good news of great joy. What is the good news? that Christ the Savior is born, and that's for all people from Luke. And we know this, and joy is an interesting word because it's a relational term. We have joy because of who we're in relationship with. We have security because of him. If you think about it, that's a mark of the believer, isn't it? In Galatians, it's the fruit of the Spirit, love, and joy. And we get to celebrate that because we know about salvation as Christians and what he shared with us. And if we don't, John 3.16 is another affirmation of this message. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, the one that was born in a manger, that grew to, die, to live a sinless life and die on our behalf and raise again, so that if we believe in him, we're not going to perish, we're going to have everlasting life. And that gives us joy. Even greater news about the great joy we find in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace we've been saved through faith. We didn't earn it. We didn't have to do anything. We just get to celebrate it because it's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. It's not a result of works. That way nobody needs to boast. Christ is the source of our joy. He's our king. And as a king, he secures us in our salvation, just like a king secures his people, and defends his people. He's also a source of our peace. And as a king, he promotes the well-being of all of his subjects and all aspects of their lives. He, and Christ provides us deep access to peace that we can only know through him. Looking back at those first four lines of the hymn, remember what they're celebrating. 
peace. Peace on earth because of Christ. The, stand, the hymn refers to Christ giving us peace or rest or healing at least six times. Peace on earth, mercy mild. They call him the Prince of Peace. Light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. What does scripture say about the peace? Well, when the whole host of heavenly host of angels came in and they gave the second message, the climax of the whole peace of the angels in this section of scripture. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. Peace is another relational term that we enjoy only because of our relationship with Christ. That we enjoy because we have a relationship with him, not because of the things that are happening around us on the surface, not because of the turmoil and the disappointments of how is Christmas going to work out this year. That's disappointing, but that's not, doesn't have to disturb our deep inner peace that we enjoy through Christ. Notice that's also a mark of the believer, isn't it, from Galatians, from the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace. From Isaiah 9, 6, the hymn quotes this. It's one of the prophecies. A child will be born to us. A son will be given. The government's going to rest on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and what? Prince of Peace, Lord of Peace. He's our source of our peace. Ephesians 2.14 speaks to that. Paul is addressing this with the Jews and the Gentiles. and He's talking about unity in the body of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier, the dividing wall. And Paul's talking about two kinds of dividing walls here. One between our fellow man. And we're all part of the body of Christ. White, black, Asian, Hispanic, rich and poor, the older, the elderly, the young, disenfranchised, those that are really well off. We're all part of the body of Christ. If we know him. And we have peace with one another because of him. Just think about if we really live that out in our community, in this culture that, that we're in. And his peace is, is an everlasting peace. It's also a peace that we enjoy with the Lord. Because of Christ, we have peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 is another very practical scripture that talks about peace in everyday life. And for the, those of us that are having difficulty at Christmas time, even though we know that we're celebrating the King and the birth of the King and the joy that we have with Him, and it is a great time of celebration, in a practical sense, when we're upset, God gives us an answer for that as well. Don't be anxious about anything and everything by prayer and pleading. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And what happens? Peace of God it surpasses all comprehension. Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, what we're talking about this morning is celebrating, just like the angels, the birth of our Savior. Celebrating Him as the source that can sustain us in life in all circumstances. A source that gives us joy and a source that gives us peace. And I shared about my dad. Um, we got to know each other later in life and had a great time. Um... About five years ago now, when we did our first GLS conference here, uh, I got a phone call. One of the things I should share with you, when I was in eighth grade, that's when I kind of came to the, 
really invest my relationship with the Lord. And I took a trip between the summer of my eighth grade and ninth grade year in high school to visit my dad in London and in Scotland where he was living. And I shared the gospel with him. And he said, he is a very successful businessman. I don't need that, Bob. Don't bother. There's lots of ways to get peace and joy in life. There's lots of ways to know him. It doesn't have to go through, through Christ. He had seen a lot of the world. Five years ago, when I got a phone call from his sister, my aunt's sister, I knew something was wrong. And so I went back to my office back in the old spaces there and called her up, and she said, you know, your dad was out. He loved the water. He was out on the water swimming, and he had a heart attack. And they tried to save him. He was struggling. Like that turmoil on the top of the water. They threw him a life preserver and he couldn't get to it. And they couldn't get to him and he died. They didn't find him for almost 24 hours. And that's when I got the phone call and they knew what happened. So my brothers and I went down to pick my father's remains up and he was out of town visiting somebody when he was on the water. But would you know, by God's grace, three years before he passed away, he did come to know Christ. He did. He has a brother that's a strong Christian that loves him and witness to him and some, some friends and, and a great church down at South Padre Island, Texas that he was going. And he had a CD in his car player playing music about heaven. And he had the first Bible he ever bought right there in his car seat that he found. We're in the midst of this terrible turmoil, not having much peace, and yet God's peace because we knew where my father was. It sustained us through that time. And you know, I know a lot of folks here because I'm a care pastor, we get to see, I know a lot of you have experienced similar pains and you're going through those now. You know, we have a fantastic care team and we're doing lots of mission, different um, things to care for folks. Do you know that we've done over 2,000 care actions just that we've documented in the last 11 months for this body of believers here? It's amazing. And we've done more than that. It's just we don't capture it all because how could we get so many good people on our care team to do so many wonderful things? That's over six a day if you count it up that we've done. Over 250 families that we've touched. Almost a family a day. If you look around here, there's probably, what, about 500, 600 people in this room. Almost every other person that represents. So if you look around and you wonder, are there people hurting in our community? Is there somebody that needs to be encouraged? Yes. And I want to thank our care team. Thank you for clapping for them. Because they do a great job. Here's some of the things that we do in our church. <laughs> so I'm a care pastor. I get to make a shameless plug for these ministries. We just opened up the care, the, uh, care and counseling center. We were going to do, we do counseling right now. and trying to help people. We're already overwhelmed. We're on a backlog. But we're trying to hire people and, and, and do more. So contact us. We have a wonderful care team to meet your daily practical needs. Whether you go in the hospital, you have... You need prayer, you need a visit, you need encouragement, you need a meal. That's the kind of things we do. We have a wonderful physical needs team that does the same kind of things. If you're elderly and you need something fixed around the house or you have a spouse and that's deployed and you just, you're a single mom and you need help, just, just practical, physical need type of help, we do that for you. Contact us. We have a wonderful, tremendous, we just hired Kim King about, oh, four months ago in our special needs ministry. What a great job she's doing. Our families are coming back to the church, and we're meeting the needs of the special families in our community, and we're trying to enhance and do more with that. We have a benevolence program, so don't, for those that need it, people lose jobs, people are having a hard time. Don't hesitate to reach out to us because that's why the church is here. That's why we've been resourced to do these kind of things. I just want to leave you with how should you respond to this. 
There we go. I was wondering what happened to that. How should you respond? What are your reasons for singing this Christmas? What are your reasons? If you don't know Christ, place your trust in him. Talk to one of the staff, one of the ushers, one of the prayer team that would be in the back. Find out about him. If you do know him, you know you have a source of peace and joy that's deeper than anything around us. Share that with somebody. And think of what this world would be like in our community here if we had oneness like Paul was talking about to the Ephesians because of Christ. Because of the message that the angels gave us on that Christmas Eve. True joy, deep peace come only through Christ the King. That's why the angels sing. Or that's why the heavens ring. So, would you mind uh, joining me in, in a prayer? Lord, thank you for our time together. Thank you for the deep peace that we get only through you. And the joy that we have only through you. May we experience that in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a truly wonderful Sunday. Thanks for joining us here today.